Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, an arbitrary code execution exploit capable of love. And this is episode 2 of my new Let's Play of Paradise Killer. So, pretty much uh, we're going to dive into the game for reals and proper now. There's not really anything else I need to say before we do so, but I did just want to kind of hang out up here for a minute and gaze out across this uh, deeply enticing cityscape. I know it's nighttime right now, but I genuinely love the vibes and design of this game. There's something... I don't know, you know, hopefully I'll talk later a bit more about uh, my love for musical genres, including Vaporwave, but the whole kind of like dusty, concrete, sleepy 1980s Miami beachfront vibe is just kind of absolutely sublime. So this guy beeping away over here is one of the save points, which are also fast travel points. You can spend one blood crystal to unlock them, so I will. Fast travel unlocked. This game has no autosave, so we're going to have to be careful to... Uh... Oh yeah, you get skins every time you open one. Uh, the ego must be seen. Apply your mark to everything you own. Generation Remix will never die. Symbols of justice. Justice, 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 justice. So these can be actually applied in your laptop. That one's more fun than the previous one, so I'll talk about the laptop a bit more later in this episode after I've wandered around and looked at things, because that is now what we are freely available to do. We can wander around and rummage in the bins and pick things up and put them down again and uh, scratch our head and ask invasive questions of people and just generally Columbo our way into starting this, uh, this investigation. Drinks cost blood crystals? Let's browse. I love this. Yeah, it's actually making us input as if we had a keypad. That's that. I love this kind of um, embodiment in games, even when it's uh, not a super embodied game in general. Angel Ward, a highball named after a district on one of the old islands. It was rife with unexplained crime before the Paradise Psycho Unit determined the demonic cause. The flavor changes each island in line with the new whiskey blend. Dead Nebula thanks you for your purchase. Please enjoy your cold, refreshing beverage. Dead Nebula monitors the drinking habits of all inhabitants of Paradise Islands, be they syndicate or citizen. For security reasons, we need to al analyze your voice pattern. Please say the following phrase. Dead Nebula, more refreshing than a cosmic apocalypse. Well, I guess some of them were refreshing. It's been a while, Lady Love dies. That damned harmony thing was a mess. Well, how about some free drinks? We're not authorised, you know how it is. What brings you back to the island? The council mass murder last night. No way, we thought something was wrong. We got down to the last of our stock and no one's refilling us. The island can't end until I solve this case. How's it feel being back on the beat? I was born to investigate. The idle lands are no place for an investigator. We feel you. Nice to see the investigation freak again. You got the inside scoop for me? Any weird drinking habits? When that demonic possession happened a decade ago, we sold a lot more sanity. People like protection. Does it actually work? Does anything? Listen, you're one of the good guys. We want to help. You keep buying drinks and we'll see what we can do. There's a broken vending machine in the warehouses. Someone jammed something in it. We think it may be an upgrade for Starlight. It's going to take some time to get the machine rebooted. Which is code for, buy more drinks. The island is hot, I'm sure I'll be thirsty. That's the spirit, we'll be in touch. So, there's two things here. One is that this game is absolutely rife with collectibles. Uh, there's various different flavours of collectible to find lying around the island, one of which are the Dead Nebula vending machines. And the other is that I kind of like that I genuinely have no idea if we were just talking to a vending machine, or if we were talking to the person who owns and runs the vending machines, or if we were talking to the sort of spirit of some kind of corporation in and of itself, which is all a bit mysterious, frankly. Halt. This is a restricted area. What do you want, freak? I have authority from Judge. You need direct permission from Grand Marshal IQCO14 to enter. She doesn't have jurisdiction. Judge does. I'm investigating at their behest. Now let me in. Step back before I make you step back. 
You're threatening the investigator? This is a military facility. I'm not obliged to let you in. I only take orders from the Grand Marshal. She isn't in charge here. The Grand Marshal runs the marshals. I am a marshal. This isn't getting me anywhere. Are you authorized to answer questions? No, I'm under orders to direct you to the Grand Marshal. Fantastic. What do you want, freak? I'm just going to go. So every time we have a conversation with someone or we pick up something that gives us a bit of information, um, all of that data is logged in Starlight. And uh, some stuff is listed as notes. There's case files, which has important bits of information about specific things. And then there's the inventory, which has all of our random shit and um, bits of evidence in it as well. There's also a full tracking of all of the population. So these are the, the supposedly murdered uh, council that run this city. These are the syndicate, which are a sort of a privileged upper class, as far as I can tell. Most of them... I guess I guess there's not a ton of them, actually. And then there's the citizens. Uh, 3,106 worshippers and workers, presumably all of whom have been murdered. In fact... Ah, interesting. I didn't realise there's bits of law info in here. I'll have to go through these. Victims of mass abductions brought to the islands and forced to worship the gods. The psychic energy created by their worship is channeled by syndicate priests and fed to the gods. Citizens are the lowest class of island inhabitants, spending their lives in worship and working on the deep factory and farm. So, right from the beginning, it's clear that this is a very sinister, unequal society. Also, <laughs> the fact that the timeline of the murder begins with man's prehistory is also delightful. I might uh, devote some time next episode to just going through all of the information we already have and looking through everything that's available here in uh, Starlight. But yeah, so mechanically, the way this game adjudicates its uh, investigation is that um, exploring, talking to people, fiddling with things, all of this will get you information, which is filed in various ways under those various different uh, headings in your laptop. And um, that information can sort of be interacted with and used. It's kind of like... It's actually not that dissimilar to a point-and-click game's inventory system where you solve puzzles by combining bits of stuff in your inventory, except it's all information that exists in your mind. Relic obtained. Island sequence 002, Memento. Second island sequence, a dreadful time. We learn of the demons in the stars and they come for us. So yeah, also that piece of information about the citizenry shows that we... This is possibly hived off from reality in some way, but um, this is not the entirety of reality. There is a world beyond the Paradise Islands. And it is from that world that both the Syndicate members themselves and the uh, citizenry are sourced. But also, I mean, it seems pretty clear to me that um, like the people running this society are not to be trusted and are deeply sinister. It's very kind of... Uh, you know, it's very Warhammer 40,000 he says, guy who has only ever played Warhammer 40,000 playing something else for the first time ever. In the sense of kind of um, sinister upper echelons of society sacrificing millions of people for sinister goals that are probably not good. A tower that broadcasts music to the speakers on the island. There's a tape in here. Music obtained. Nostalgic sounds. Memories of the carefree days now lost. This is APOC by leaving, or leaving by APOC. You whispered goodbye to me as you left for the moon. You sent me music you wrote as while staring at the earth, and this is it. So yeah, one of the classes of collectibles that you can find as you wander around the game world is uh, cassette tapes, which are attached to speakers broadcasting music to the island, and... Um, you know, as befits a member of the upper classes and the police force of this island, you can freely take that away so no one else gets to have it. <laughs> the goddess Blood Dancer. She, she gifted technology to many races and is an astral engineer without equal. She has no interest in ethics and her experiments have caused genocides across entire planets. There's also these uh, god and goddess statues all over the place. I'm not really sure what their deal is. But um, I'm spending basically ten whole minutes wandering around in this little garden pointlessly, so... Let's uh, let's actually look around. So I should probably make a plan for my investigation. I want to take a look at the scene of the murder sometime soon, and I should probably interview every single one of the suspects, or uh, I guess persons of interest, since they're not all suspects. 
But uh, then again, you know, we are the investigator. All of these people should be considered guilty until proven innocent, in my humble opinion. So, um, that looks like it's the closest option. I think that, that might be the apartments where the guy lived, uh, the leader Montserrat. How would you do it? Do what? Murder the council, kill paradise, all that. A gun. A gun? Yeah, just walk in, bullet in each head. You're messed up. Well, you asked. Whatever, laters. So yeah, as far as I can tell, Shinji's purpose is to basically taunt you, or perhaps in a more charitable point of view, get you to think a little bit more about what might be happening. Vile Embrace journeyed across the stars to find new races to vivisect, a carnal god whose followers engage in extreme sex. Sounds like my kind of party. Oh my god, how many of these are there? The god dying from sadness is a sentient rock that drifted to Earth in the cosmic wake of other gods. A renowned despair philosopher. Sounds like my kind of party. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I should probably actually do some investigating at some point. Also, my controller seems to be busted. I keep tripping and stopping walking forwards every now and then. This is an elevator that goes to a different part of the city. Some more blood crystals. It's definitely worth grabbing every blood crystal we see. And um, there's, a, there's a kind of a strong explorational uh, element to this game. You're encouraged to uh, wander around and climb things and jump on top of things and explore. There's a lot of blood crystals and weird bits of evidence. What's that? There's something in that thing's nose. I'll have to try and get a hold of that later on. Red crest found in the Syndicate HQ. It looks like it fits into something. Uh, one of the things I remember from my brief foray into this game previously is that there's a board around here. Not very far away. With room for like 10 crests. Yet another collectible. What they do, I don't know. A fissure in an obscure galaxy inhabited by a race of psychic lizard people. Sounds like my kind of party. So, step one, honestly, should probably be to pick a syndicate member and uh, talk to them. But what I want to do is investigate the crime scene. I feel like step one for an investigator should always be take a look at the crime scene. Um, although I suppose I'm not able to get into the crime scene because we have to unlock the, what was it? The, the four holy seals. Found another tape. End of the world by APOC. Want to know the secret to power? Drink a beer on a hot afternoon. You become invincible. The feeling is like no other. I really like these little descriptions of the various tracks. I also th think that from Starlight we can choose what we're listening to. So, well, you can change the track and change the track listing. <laughs> oh, and you can set it to play via um, Starlight, which just gives you a consistent uh, audio profile always coming from the laptop you're carrying. Or you can set it to Island, at which point the music will be part of the ambience of the island. And as you approach various speaker poles, both the ones that already have stuff and these loudspeakers all over the island, uh, then you start to get... Uh, you, you, the music gets louder the closer you get, or quieter the further away you go. Now, if they were killed this morning, how have they already managed to establish a memorial? Leader Montserrat, may the silent goat always walk with you. The last time I saw Montserrat was when I was exiled three million days ago. Exile trial, island sequence 13. The crime you committed is severe. Your actions could have ended the syndicate. You let yourself be deceived by damned harmony. The god you used to enact a plot against us, threatening our holy mission and endangering the rest of the holy cosmic pantheon. I cannot believe you of all people let this happen. It breaks my heart. You served us so well and for so long. Do you have anything to say? Those deceived by gods are victims, not criminals. Victims? I did not willingly embrace damned harmony. Gods deceive you by manipulating your psyche. They can only do that if they find a weakness. You should have no weakness. You were the head of the Paradise Psycho Unit. You were supposed to protect us against these dangers. You failed us. Your sentence is exile. You will be sent to the Idle Lands for the rest of your eternal life. The Paradise Psycho Unit will be disbanded. Goodbye, Lady Love Dies. We will never meet again. 
Well, he was right about that, at least. Can I see that again if I... I'll find out who did this, she says. Um, right, so I think this is the access either to Montserrat's apartments or to... I'm kind of guessing, actually. Let's just talk to him. Colt, what do you want, Freak? To see Carmelina. Is she expecting you? I'd hope so. She should know the investigator is on the island. Grand Marshal Akiko 14 already has the suspect in custody. The crime is solved. Let's not do this. Just take me to see Carmelina. Whatever freak, she awaits in the throne room. Architect Carmelina's violin. She's currently the acting council head, I think. Lady Love dies. Architect Carmelina. Carmelina Silence, architect of the island sequences. Born to Romeo and Natasha Silence on the fourth island sequence under the sign of Blood Dancer. Her parents were skilled island architects and taught her how to weave psychic will into structure. Carmelina has since become a genius architect and will soon achieve the perfect island. Romeo Silence was seduced by the god Cosmic Deceit and committed treason against the Syndicate. As part of his punishment, no member of the Silence family would ever be allowed on the council. Her mother was killed fighting to protect the council during the demonic invasion of the Ninth Island sequence. Exile wasn't permanent for the investigation, Freak, or her little computer. If the Syndicate needs me, I answer. This is the worst crime in our history. Motlita, Montserrat, and the entire council have been taken from us. Losing Montserrat to an act of savagery is a loss all of us in the Syndicate will struggle to overcome. I will make sure they're avenged. Your sentiment is superfluous. The killer's already been apprehended by the Grand Marshal. Is that the same Grand Marshal that allowed the alleged killer to escape? Don't sling accusations around on your first day out of prison. Why did Judge choose you to assume the role of leader? Temporary leader, don't forget that. The law still stands. I am a servant, not a leader. The sins of my father still bind me. That's what I don't get. Your father's punishment still stands. You shouldn't be on the throne. You're out of the loop. The next island will be perfect, and I'm the architect. I will see us to the new island and then step aside. Any guarantee of that? Law is law. The leader cannot overturn it without unanimous council backing. The marshals work for the council, not the leader. They will ensure the law is carried out. I am an artist, a craftswoman. I have no desire to manage and administrate. These concrete halls are vessels of for bureaucracy, not art. So... Already I'm seeing some suspicious stuff here. First off, she has a clear motivation, both either vengeance for the banning of her father or um, a grab for power. She can never be on the council, unlike any other member of the syndicate. So therefore, uh, if the entire council dies, maybe she'll get she'll get made le acting leader. So um, it's also clearly rife for abuse that... Um, she says she can only be uh, she can only change the law with a unanimous council vote, but there currently is no council because they're all dead. I hope you can close this incident quickly. This island wants to die. Perfect Twenty Five is coming, and the murderer is in custody. Alleged murder. Do not ignore evidence to find a truth that isn't there. I'm here to hunt the truths that haunt this island, no matter which truth you may cling to. Believe what you want. Investigator, can I help you with anything? So once you go through like the intro to these characters, they open up to a case files or hangout menu. Hangout lets you just talk with them some more, I guess. I imagine that they open up different conversations as you pass through the game. Whereas case files lets you ask them about specific bits of information that you have. Um, so I guess, why not? Let's, uh, first off, let's get her alibi. Or it lets you ask about information that you have, I think, but it definitely lets you fill in for information you don't have, such as alibis. Where were you last night? Visiting witness. His role is to oversee the end of an island. The last moments are best enjoyed with an old friend. Do you often visit witness? Not in recent times. Our paths diverged. Did you need an alibi, perhaps? It is cowardly to insinuate, investigator. I visited him to watch the last flawed island die. What time did you arrive? About 9pm. The logs on his apartment should be able to confirm that. So there we go. Piece of testimony. And uh, added, which added two notes to Starlight. So presumably one that she arrived there and the other that she was there at all. I'm not sure. Or that she was with him, maybe. We'll find out afterwards. 
I'll save you a question as well. I left when Judge summoned us for a crisis meeting sometime after midnight. Oh yes, it actually is giving us the tutorial for how Starlight works now that we've gathered a piece of evidence rather than just having it dumped into our laptop without our uh, permission. All obtained evidence is stored in Starlight. Case files opened automatically as you find evidence. Starlight will link each piece of evidence to the relevant suspect in each case file. Starlight will also update evidence as new facts are uncovered. Starlight is limited to tracking and categorization. The investigator must use their intuition and reasoning to define truth. Since this is the first piece of evidence you've acquired, Starlight will now display how the evidence is categorized. This is the only time this flow will be displayed. If you wish to see this flow every time you acquire evidence, please enable evidence flow in the options menu. I didn't really need to read all of that. I might switch that on actually. It'll be interesting to see. See that happen. Okay, so we got Carmelina's testimony and it put that piece of information under the alibi uh, thing because it's an alibi. So presumably if you find out that her alibi is untrue, um, then you can confront her about that by combining these two pieces in some way. I don't know, I'm basically guessing about how the the evidence system works because, uh, well, at the moment I haven't really ex experimented with it because I haven't played this game, but I'm, I'm hoping that it will be a bit more... I think, I think it should be an, an interesting take on the ways that mechanics can be done uh, in an investigation game. Architect, what do you know about the crime last night? Only what we were told by the Grand Marshal in the crisis meeting. Henry broke free and murdered the council. Why would a citizen have enough motive and the ability to kill the council, breaching all of the Holy Seals? Well, that's not for me to question. I'm surprised there's any question at all. So you believe he did it? Of course, and so should you. You're a disgrace. Finish this quickly and maybe the next council will look favourably on you. Can you think of anyone that would want to strike against the council? Asking such a thing is dreadful, Investigator. The prime suspect is behind bars and needs to be executed. All of us are loyal members of the Syndicate. I can't think of anything, anyone that would commit a crime like this. So, it seems to me that... I mean, obviously she's suspicious because of all the suspicious things, but also she might just be wanting this to be finished quickly because she wants to move on to the next island and she doesn't want to be here anymore. She wants to um, allow the flower of her creation to bloom, if you will. What about yourself? Would you have any reason to commit murder? Absolutely not. How dare you, investigator? Is there anyone that can think of a reason for you? I'm beginning to think Judge made a mistake bringing you back. What do you know about K-Hax's disappearance? It's a mystery. I do hope nothing bad has happened to him. We always enjoyed talking. When did you last see him? A couple of weeks ago. My schedule became hectic as we closed down the island. So I could hang out and maybe get some more information from her, but I'm just going to leave. May the silent goat walk with you. And may you reach the moon. So I, sus I think there's actually a visual novel like dating sim component to this as well. Presumably if I hang out with someone enough, I can go on a date with them, maybe. <laughs> Perhaps get a little kiss from some kind of infinite cyber god from beyond time and space. Which is really what we all want, anyway. So, that should pretty much be the end of today's episode. We travelled about 20 feet and uh, achieved one pe useful piece of evidence and also picked up some trinkets. So, join me again for next episode where we'll find out more things about this strange place and everything within it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe and share. I also stream on Twitch and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.